Howdy guys, our scoop coming at you with an introduction to magic or how to play magic if you would. I've noticed while around my relatives that more people would be open to magic if it didn't seem so overwhelming from the outside perspective. Now check the description to skip about a minute or two ahead to the tutorial, otherwise enjoy my voice a minute longer. <laughs> now with that I'm going to be explaining how to play within a standard format. The standard basically means current as in only the most recent cards are allowed to be played in this standard format. So basically it changes every so often with the release of more new cards. One final note, this video will be broken into two videos, basic and advanced. The first half is obviously going to be the basic half, teaching all the key core elements of magic. The bare bones, the how to play, and how to win in a nutshell. The other half being the advanced section. Something to help refresh older or returning players, or even someone new who is learning magic all on their own. Remember, the basics is going to be extremely sweet and simple. It is designed to help you understand just enough to start playing, and the rest will be through the aid of a more experienced player. More than likely, that's going to be the person trying to get you into magic. Do take note that there are just a few basic rules in magic, and then the cards make the rest of the rules for you. But fret not! The most important part of learning to play Magic the Gathering is hands-on experience. First, though, some quick lore-relevant knowledge to get you in the mood. Within a standard format, you will have a minimum of a 60-card deck. This deck is referred to as your library within the game rulings. This is your spell book. And you, as a player, are a planeswalker, which is a magical being. Now, planes in the magic universe are basically worlds. So, planeswalker means world walker, as in can travel between different worlds. Pretty gnarly, huh? Now, your library is your knowledge of and spells learned from these different planes or worlds that you have visited. Alright, so, now let's get to it. Now, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you shuffle your library or your deck of cards. Uh, you're going to spend most of your time playing Magic doing this. The idea here is that you're randomizing your cards so you don't get too many of one type while playing because that could be rather bad for you in the wrong situation. So, how do you win? You win a game of Magic by reducing your opponent's life total to zero. You start off at 20. There are a few ways to lose a game of Magic. The most common way, uh, aside from having a life total of zero, is if you were to draw a card at the beginning of your turn and have no cards left in your library for you to draw, then you lose the game. There are three types of cards in Magic. These types are lands creatures and then non-creatures now the goal here is that you turn all of your lands sideways to produce what's called mana which is your resource that you will use to cast your creatures and non-creatures each land card produces only one mana of its respective type its respective type is generally whatever color it is red is mountain so here we have one mountain it can only produce one unless a card would state otherwise. How do you know how much land or mana each creature and non-creature spell costs? Easy. You look at the top right corner. Now, the symbols here represent a specific color of mana that needs to be produced to cast a spell. And then the gray number represents quote-unquote generic mana, meaning it doesn't matter how many of what color is spent, just as long as the gray number is met. So then you'll add all the colors up. That's gr uh, gray and whatever specific color. This P in the LAR uh, calls for three mana, one of which is a red, and then the other two can be any color, even colorless mana. Now, this shock only requires one mana, but it must be a red mana. All right, now, you start the game by randomly choosing who goes first, and each player sets their life total to 20. Then each player draws seven cards from their library. These cards will be their hands. 
You want to keep your hand a secret from your opponent because you don't want them to know what spells you have until you're casting them. A.K.A. you want to always have the element of surprise for your opponent. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep my hand revealed. So, here we will have my hand. And the purpose of revealing my hand is just so you can understand what's going on. Alright. Magic is a turn-based game. Meaning, I take my turn, then you take your turn. Then I take my turn again, etc., etc. So we pass turns back and forth until one of us wins and the other loses. It's important to know the different steps taken within each player's turns. There are basically five steps to each turn. There are actually more, but for starting purposes, you only need to know these five. Uh, the first one being your begin turn. Now this is going to be the beginning of your turn. This is going to be where you untap all tap cards you have. Meaning your lands and creatures if you attacked with them. Meaning you'll turn them from sideways. So if they were tapped, you would turn them from tapped to untapped. Meaning you can use them again. Meaning they are unspent and ready to go. And then of course you would draw one card from your library to keep the fire going. Because as you cast cards you're obviously running out of hand size. Next is your main phase one. This is where you will tap your lands uh, to cast how many ever creature and non-creature spells you want that you can afford, of course. So there's no limit to how many spells or how many creatures you can cast in a turn. You, you just can only do as much as you have the mana to do. The next step is your combat step. This is the most important step because you don't win unless you reduce your opponent's life total to zero. The easiest way to do that is to attack your opponent with your creatures. Keep in mind that your opponent may have the opportunity to block your attacking creatures, but only if he himself has one or more creatures out. Next is your main phase 2. This is the same as main phase 1, just most times people prefer to wait until after combat to cast things. Because you never know how much the board or the fields can change from before to after combat. Finally, we have the end step. If you have seven or more cards in your hand, you have to discard them into your graveyard until you have seven cards left in your hand. Now, if you have less than seven cards in your hand, you don't have to do anything, and then it'll become your opponent's turn. And that's it. That is it. That covers all the basics that you need to know to start up a game of Magic. For a quick example of how the game will be played, I will take a few turns with this hand that I have here. Okay, so we'll say that I'm going first, and we're going to enter my begin, my begin turn. The very first turn of the game, you do not draw. So since I'm going very first, I will not draw. Now I'm going to play one land for this turn. You can only play one land per turn. So there's my one land for this turn. I'm going to tap this land to produce one red mana. I'm going to use that one red mana to cast a Bowmat Carrier, which is a creature spell. So since it is a creature spell, it will remain on the battlefield. Now there's two types of spells. There's permanent and then there's non-permanent, basically. Your permanents will stay on the field where your non-permanents will not stay on the field. As soon as you cast them, they go to your graveyard. The only thing that's not a permanent, basically, will be instants and sorceries. Now, you can tell what type of spell is what, but if you look right here in the middle where the bar of the card is, and then there we have it. You can see that this is an instant. This is an artifact creature. This is a goblin warrior. If it is a instant or a sorcery is going to go straight to your graveyard when you're done casting it. But uh, enchantment, an artifact, a creature, etc., a planeswalker, it will stay out on the battlefield until it is removed by damage or any other effect. Now, when a creature enters the battlefield, it will have summoning sickness. But this Bowmat Carrier gets around it because he has an ability called Haste. Haste means they can attack the same turn they come out as if they did not have summoning sickness. All creatures enter the battlefield with summoning sickness, meaning they cannot attack or be turned sideways uh, until being out for one full turn. With that, we are going to enter into combat, and I'm going to swing my Bowmat Carrier at my opponent. 
Because of Bomat Courier's effect, I will have to exile this top card, but do not worry about that. Main phase two. Alright, I choose to cast nothing because I'm tapped out of mana. Then my end step. I have one, two, three, four, five cards in hand. I don't have to worry about discarding, so I'll pass the turn to my opponent. My opponent then passes turn back to me. It is my turn. Begin turn. I'm going to untap everything. And then I'm going to draw a card. Drew a land. Now, I get to play another land because I'm in my main phase one. I only get to play one land per turn. So I will play another land. And now I'm going to tap one red mana to cast a shock. Since it only costs one red mana. And it's going to do two damage to my opponent or a creature he has. And then it will go straight to my graveyard. And then I will enter combat. I will hit my opponent for another one damage with my Bowmat Carrier. And then I will enter main phase two. And then I will pay another red mana to cast another shock. Do another two damage to my opponent. And now I have no more mana to spend for this turn. And then I only have three cards left in hand, so end step and pass turn. Now it comes back to me again. I will begin turn to untap everything. And then I will draw a card. Now, I'm going to play another land. I always like to play my lands first to make sure that I do not miss my land drops. Because that, that's the worst feeling when you forget to play a land. Um, I'm going to tap three red mana. And then I'm going to cast a Goblin Chain Whirler. Since he costs three red mana. Now, Goblin Chain Whirler has an ability of whenever he enters the battlefield, he deals one damage to each of my opponents and each creature and planeswalker they control. So as soon as he enters, my opponent will take one, and all of his creatures will take one. I will enter combat and swing Bowmat Courier. Now you can see that I'm going to keep doing this over and over and over until either I lose my field in my life, or my opponent loses his field in his life. Whoever gets a zero first. This is a red deck. Red decks are generally uh, aggro decks, and they're best for beginners because they're a lot more straightforward as far as... Just cast spells and burn your opponent's face until he's done. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for your support. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And IR Scoop, out.